I'd like to address three specific areas of this finance bill. First, the approach that the government has taken. Secondly, the impact that the finance bill is going to have. And thirdly, some alternatives, which I uh, think would be better alternatives to some of the, the decisions that have been made. Now, in terms of the approach, I'd say three things. It, this budget is technically unsound. It is technically incompetent. It's had inadequate parliamentary oversight and it mangles basic economics in arriving at its conclusions. Now, in terms of the technical incompetence, I'm just going to cover two examples. One is VAT. The projected government take from the two percentage point increase in VAT is 670 million euros. Now, it turns out that that doesn't include the fact that consumption will fall. It doesn't include the fact that employment will fall and that small and medium enterprises in Wicklow around the country will go out of business, will lay people off, and it doesn't take account of the reduced corporation tax. Now, conservatively, if you add the three of those things in, the 670 million projected take by the government goes down by about 300 to 350 million. That's one third of the entire projected increase in tax take that a 15-year-old studying economics could tell you should be in the analysis. It's absolutely mind-boggling in its incompetence that that isn't in there. I, I discussed it directly with the Taunashta in this House and he confirmed none of it is in. Secondly, we have this growth target, budget deficit target of 8.6%. Now, the Taoiseach seems to still be standing over the growth forecast this is predicated on of 1.3%. He stood over it in this House even when a vast array of organisations downgraded it and now fi finally the central bank has downgraded it themselves to 0.5%. In terms of inadequate parliamentary oversight, two quick examples. One is the lack of technical appendices. There's no decision criteria, there's no cost-benefit analyses, there's none of the basic analysis that any parliament in a developed country would expect in order to be able to interrogate the, uh, the government proposals. Now, secondly, in 2008 there was a World Bank report which looked at budgetary processes and we were ranked second from the bottom in the OECD. Two metrics are very interesting. The first is the amount of technical detail supplied to parliaments in order to allow them to interrogate government proposals. Out of ten, we scored zero. Zero. The second is the amount of time parliament is given in order to interrogate government proposals on a finance bill. The minimum uh, recommendation is three months. Out of ten, we score zero. So we had another example of the most centralised decision-making process uh, in Europe. It's so absolutely disgraceful. And the third area in the approach is this extraordinary misunderstanding of economics. It's like someone at the cabinet table sent someone down to Hodges Figgis to buy Introduction to Economics. And they read the first chapter and it said, if you want to promote employment, don't tax labour. And then they lost the book and they decided, sure, we'll do that and that'll do us, that'll do us fine. Well, there's no elasticity analysis. There's nothing to say, were we to increase income taxes, these are the number of people who would leave the country, who would move to Australia, who would simply choose to stop working uh, for some reason. Now, I met with a senior lawyer recently and, and put this to him, and he said, you know what, I'm already being taxed at the margin at over 60%. I earn an awful lot of money, and if the government were to increase it at 70%, you know, I'd probably stop working uh, a few weeks of the year. And I said to him, so what? What's the problem with that? You want to work less, there's no problem. We got an awful lot of unemployed lawyers who'd love that hour's work. So here's what I'd say to the government. You are utterly misusing economics that you don't seem to understand. You have no analysis to back up the ridiculous, flawed assertions that you're making. And even if at the margin, people on the higher end did do 5, 10, 20% less work, that's fine. We got a whole lot of unemployed people who need the work. Now, let's accept that we do have a highly progressive tax system. I believe we have the most progressive tax system in Europe. If you compare someone earning €100,000 right now to someone earning €25,000, the person earning €100,000 pays 20 times more tax than the person earning €25,000. That is a highly progressive system. The government says, well, we couldn't possibly increase taxes on people over 120,000 because they'd all move en masse to Australia for some reason that they don't back up. Um, now, first of all, that's nonsense. Secondly, 
We're in survival mode. A lot of money has to be found and has to be found quickly. The principle applied should be where can we find the money that we need that does the least amount of economic and social harm. And on those criteria, this budget and this government has failed entirely. Let me give you a quick example. Last week I visited the community, the community centre in Fassero and Bray. Fassero is one of the most disadvantaged communities in Wicklow. And I was absolutely shocked by what I saw. The staff there were telling me that this finance bill and the cuts the government has made so far are hitting the most vulnerable in this estate and in this community so much that the children are now being sent to the centre, to the drop-in, some of them to get food, to eat. So we're setting up a proxy soup kitchen in a country of abundance, even though we're insolvent. In a country of abundance, we are setting up soup kitchens in some of our most disadvantaged communities. The staff were telling me that they're now using their tea money to buy school jumpers and shoes for some of the kids who are going back because their parents don't have the money. Now, if anyone in the government thinks that I'm making this up, I'm going to run through a very quick case study. This is a real case study. A single mother with four kids in the estate. A newborn baby, a three-year-old, an eight-year-old, and a 12-year-old. She was on loan parents in the Community Employment Scheme allowances. Because of the consolidation, she's lost €3,525 a year. Because of the fuel allowance cut, she's lost €120 Euros a year. Because of the child benefit cut, she's lost €432 Euros a year. Because of the back-to-school allowance cut, she's lost €305. Euros. Because of the confirmation and communion cut, she's lost €180. Euros. Now, this is a total of €4,562 Euros in cash that a single mother with four kids in my constituency is having to take. Now let's compare that 4,562 euros to someone earning 150,000 euros. The total hit they're going to take is 100 euros. Now, it gets worse. She works on a community employment scheme, which is threatened because of the 66% cuts to material and training. And her childcare is provided by one of the community employment schemes, which is also under threat. So that is a choice that this government has made. They've decided to say, we're going to take over 4,500 euros off you while you try and raise your four children. And this other person, who lives a few miles down the road, who earns 150, 200,000 euros, we're going to take 100 euros off them for the household charge. Why? Because the chapter of the book we read said, under no circumstances tax labour. So that's what this government has done. Now, here's what I would say to people in Fine Gael. A lot of people I've spoken to on our respect. Some weird, right-wing, incompetent cabal has taken over your party. This is not the action of the party of Garrett Fitzgerald. It absolutely isn't. Like, what are you doing? 100 euros for a, for a high earner. 4,562 euros for this lady. And to the deputies and the leaders of the Labour Party, again, who I know personally and I'm, I'm coming to admire and respect, what are you at? You were put in government to stop Fina Gale doing this kind of thing to our people. Where are you? You've got to start standing up to these people. That's what this finance bill is doing. There are alternatives, and I appreciate you here like I'm out of time. Thank I appreciate you. that it is easy for me to stand on this side of the house and shout and say what you're doing is unfair. So here's a few, if you bear with me for 30 seconds, get here like, well, freeze the increments, 250 million I... euros. Reduce the top increment by one, 350 million euros. Reduce higher end pay further. Let's assume that that's another 200 million. That's 800 million euros. Bring in a time-bound emergency high-end tax. There are several hundred million euros to find there and cut the waste further. I cannot understand how this government can stand over this. I believe it is morally abhorrent and cowardly. Thank, thank you,